بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين خاتم الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قول أما بعد We begin by praising Allah Azza wa Jal and we send peace and blessings amongst this Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bestow his mercy upon us in this blessed month. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept our forgiveness. And we ask him to accept our repentance to him. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept our fasting and our praying and our qiyam and all of our actions in this blessed month. <coughs> My brothers and my sisters in Islam, I'm sure we've all heard throughout the lectures every day what the month of Ramadan is all about. I think we've all memorized that verse, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tatakun. If you haven't memorized it, you haven't been praying tarawih. I'm sure you hear it every single day. Alhamdulillah, the, the, the point of Ramadan is so that we remind each other about this verse so we can understand the objective of the month. But I'm not going to be talking about that. Inshallah, I, just, I wanted to remind you of something that I myself need to be reminded about. And I haven't really prepared for today because I really wanted this talk to come out of my heart, inshallah, so that it can trigger the weakness in my heart. And inshallah, it can hit all your hearts, bi'ithnillah. I wanted to talk about something that I think most of us don't consider. Me, myself, first and foremost. We all know that the month of Ramadan is about forgiveness and the mercy and the praying and the fasting. But one thing sometimes we let go is that the month of Ramadan is a month to establish a commitment with Allah Azza wa Jal. It's a month where we push ourselves to another level. The month of Ramadan is a month where we are supposed to excel with our actions. But the issue is, a lot of us don't set goals for ourselves. We don't have a vision where we want to be, where we want to go. And part of the reason is that we can't look back and reflect on what we've done previously. What was my last Ramadan like? Was I doing things consistently that I can remember so that I can build on them this year? So what I'm trying to get to is, as a Muslim, you need to have a vision in your life. You need to have a direction. Set yourself a path on that which you will be striding on. You have a purpose in this life to live. Your purpose is that you worship Allah to the best of your ability. How do you measure the best of your ability? See, for most of us, last Ramadan came and we, we had an Iman boost. We really did. We prayed together, we fasted, we alhamdulillah, we done as much as we can. But the problem is we didn't set goals. We didn't set ourselves objectives to meet. We didn't push ourselves to the limit. And then after Ramadan left, we, we turned into those Ramadan Muslims. You know, where Ramadan is like the month where you see, it's like Allah, وَالْعِيَذُ بِاللَّهِ His mercy is closed outside that month. You know, we need to understand that we need to develop as Muslims day by day. And if you don't set yourself goals, and if you don't have a vision to see where you want to go, you can't improve. I'll give you an example. For argument's sake, last Ramadan, I set a goal for myself to read five pages of Qur'an a day. For some people, that's, that's too much. Some people, it's not enough, whatever the case is. And you did that consistently for 30 days. But then after that, you left it. So your Qur'an went backwards. Then come this Ramadan, your goal is five, five pages again. The problem is, you let your goals be. You left them. The point of Ramadan is so that you establish a platform to build on. 
Allah gifts us the month of Ramadan each and every single year. For those who get to see it, Alhamdulillah. He gifts us the month of Ramadan as a gift. Wallahi, it's a gift. Because Allah Azza wa Jal allows us to reflect over our lives. He gives us a month in which we sit down and reconsider and evaluate where we've been going with our lives. Most of us for the last 11 months haven't touched the Quran. Maybe haven't been to a mosque once. And subhanAllah, the month of Ramadan comes and we come and pray Taraweeh every single night and sit, intermingle with the Muslims and the brothers and the sisters mixed with the sisters and we feel the Iman booster again. But subhanAllah, for some reason, it's like we forget. We forget the benefits of these, these gatherings and, and, and the outcomes of these gatherings and, and the blessings of the month of Ramadan. Because nobody pushes you to open the Quran in this month. You just you choose to do it yourself. And this is truly the blessing of Allah. Nobody tells you come and pray. If you don't want to be here, you don't have to be here. But you make these choices. See, when you make these choices, you need to push yourself. And you need to ask yourself, what can I attain in this month? I want to read Quran this month. Okay, but you say I want to read Quran. So if you read one page today, three tomorrow, ten the day after, and none the following day. There's no consistency. You need to set yourself measurable goals. You need to say, I want to be reading five pages a day. Or five pages after every prayer. And I'm only using Quran as an example. When you set these goals, you now have something to measure. You have a measuring stick. You see, now you can measure whether you've succeeded or you've failed. And if you've gone for the full month and attained your goals and pushed yourself, you've, you've successfully completed the month of Ramadan in which you truly believe you were, you were capable of. Now you build on this. Because if, if Allah grants you the month of Ramadan and you use up the month of Ramadan, then you just neglect it after Ramadan, you failed. And this is why I said at the beginning that the Muslim needs to be the one who sets goals and objectives for himself. He needs to have a vision. He needs to see where he's going in life. He needs to always reflect upon his purpose in this dunya. What is my purpose? What am I here for? Yes, work is part of your purpose. You know, spending time with the family, part of your purpose. Spending time with the believers, part of your purpose. You need to create that balance. And part of the balance is that you worship Allah to the best of your ability. But again, I, 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 I reiterate on this point, the best of your ability is only measurable if you set goals. And if you don't, you, you will, I, I assure you, because I've gone through this myself, you don't move forward as a Muslim. And it's very dangerous because you stay at the same position where you're at and you continue to stay and if there's no moving forwards, there's moving backwards. And wallahi, you can slip out of the din. It's, it's a very dangerous position because Allah is gifting us this month, but in a way we sort of, yani we, we, we neglect the gift. You know, we don't really recognize what, what the power of the gift that we have is. Yani it's been about six or so days of fasting and may Allah accept all our fasting and our actions, but it's not too late to set goals. It's not too late to tell yourself, look, I have 20 so days left in Ramadan. What do I want to achieve in these days? What am I capable of achieving in these days? Reflect, ask yourself. If you don't know how to read Quran, learn. Ask someone that does. Listen to the Quran. Don't just let it go and say, you know what, there's no classes in Ramadan. I'll wait till after, because you're not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You need to seriously sit down, give yourself that minute or two. Tell yourself, what can I do in this month to improve? And remember, Ramadan is a platform so that you can spring and jump off. It's not the month where you need to pump and then for 11 months you just be whatever you want. No, no, no. Ramadan is the platform, the gift. And this is why I call it a gift. The gift that Allah Azza wa Jal presents to you year, year on year so that you can build as a Muslim. Because the nature of man is that we forget. And this is the nature of all of us. And Allah continues to remind us every year with Ramadan that you have a purpose. There's people around you that you don't even know that care for you. There's people around you that can help you to attain that purpose that you're meant to attain. On your own, it's not that easy. It's not that, it's, it's, it's not that easy on your own. 
So you need to really think and ponder and consider what you want to achieve out of Ramadan and where you want to go after Ramadan. Because it's not just about the month of Ramadan. If, if it was about the month of Ramadan, Allah would make every month Ramadan. Because Allah doesn't do anyone injustice. And we all know the gift and the blessings and the mercy and the rewards and whatever it may be in Ramadan. But then it's up to us to continue to build on this. And if you've set the bar really high in Ramadan, then pick a few things that you want to do after the month so that you can continue to be steadfast on them. And I truly mean it. Wallahi, without these environments that you're in now, you're not going to go far. Because I've tried it myself and I know that if I'm not in the environment with the brothers and the reminders and the Quran and the, and the prayers, you don't go far. You sleep, man. You sleep. Even if you're with your family, you know, you're wasting, like, you waste time, you spend time with, with your mates, you go to eat, where you can just go to the mosque for five minutes to pray your Isha or whatever, and you, you've, just, you've tasted that, that sweetness of Iman. You know? So the point of, 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 of the message today, inshallah, is so that you can reflect upon where you are right now. What have you thought about so far? What have you set for yourself? Are they realistic? Are you being too harsh on yourself? Are you being too easy? Do you think that it's very easy to do what you've set? If it is, push the bar up a bit. You know, implement something in your life that you didn't have before, even if it's this small. You know, we know from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that Allah loves the, the small actions, the consistent actions, regardless of how small they are. So let's work on these things. Let's start writing down our goals and reflecting upon them day by day so that we can benefit from this month and continue to benefit after this month, insha'Allah. And just a few quick reminders. I don't know if you've, you've, you've been, uh, any, any of the brothers or the speakers have, have given any uh, announcements. But as you can see in front of you, alhamdulillah, obviously Ramadan is the month of zakat al-fitr and, and the month of donations and, and sadaqah and whatever it may be. Just for your reference, we've obviously got the zakat fund. I know a lot of brothers and sisters tend to pay that in Ramadan. And zakat al-mal, alhamdulillah, if you take time to read this banner uh, during the month, inshallah, just read and see the benefit that the zakat can bring back to your community through the UMA service. I'll leave that for you, inshallah. We've obviously got the dollar a day program where you, can, where you contribute to, to your, back to your community, to the da'wah and, and, and to uh, yani benefiting the community just with a dollar a day. Of outside, we've got um, different donation boxes for uh, building a masjid for the Patsto project, sadaqah for yourself. And one thing I'd like to remind the brothers about also is that after Ramadan, we've got the Brotherhood Camp. Obviously, after, uh, we have two camps each year and the, the winter camp is coming up after Ramadan. It's in the last week of, of uh, July, I believe, 27th, 28th and 29th. Um, we're selling tickets at the UMA Center and we're also selling them online, inshallah. So get your tickets early, get your tickets fast and it's a very good platform to continue to strive after Ramadan. It's, it's, it, the environment in the camps is very similar to what you, you, you receive here. So for the brothers that, that really would like to come, get your tickets early because obviously spaces are limited. And I'll leave it there inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.